the game was good, but then afterwards, Leo, I was watching, I was watching uh, some documentaries, some Louis Theroux BBC documentaries, mm-hmm. and there's this, uh, there's one they do where they go and they they meet Nick Fuentes's followers. Ooh, and Nick Fuentes's followers, he's got this. These kids who maybe Nick Fuentes shook their hand at a rally or maybe he knows their name because they're big supporters online or something. But these kids, they all wear pit vipers. What? And they all go out and just stream. And there's it. Here's how I'm going to describe them right now. It is. They are Dino and Austin. Really? They're the (laughs) same fucking people. Really? Yes. Oh yes, I, I kind of want to say that's not true, but it is like totally true. Well, really? Here's the thing: it's like, <laughs> what are the characteristics? I, I don't know. I the whole Nick Fuentes thing. I thought like his followers were smarter than they actually were. It turns out a lot of them were just fucking idiots. No, they're yeah. all dorks. They're dude. idiots, really? dude. and they're not smart because like I did. <clears throat> I didn't know much about Nick Fuentes, and I heard a lot of people say he was really smart. Even he on his streams, I was like, this is pretty fucking stupid. A lot of the stuff he says is fucking stupid. I've never watched any of it, so I can't really have it. I don't have an opinion on it, but what is, what what, what kind of things is he, what does he push? Like, what's his? So, I, I don't want to like, well, so his, his thing is, and Austin, you could check with me on this too. It's pretty much that, like, black people and women and gays and liberals all have beliefs that are at odds with the traditional American Christian values that the country was founded on. Mm -hmm. And therefore we, we should limit immigration to stop the problem where it is now and then push back against it and Christify and whiten America. Mm. That's pretty accurate. Really? He's like a super Catholic. Yeah. And he just, he's like almost like a, like a theo not a theologist what do they call it a theocracy like he's almost like pro theocracy but but some of his rants on the podcast will he'll do five minutes on how like girls are retarded Mm, and it it comes off like you told dino all right dino entertain me for five minutes do it right now cameras are rolling and it's like uh, uh, all right this guy isn't the uh the incisive social critic i once thought he was but one thing is what I thought, so Louis Theroux goes, and Louis Theroux's BBC, which are just mainstream media, and he's got his talking points. To me, it just seems like what Nick is saying is, well, there are there are black people who are also patriots and Christian also, and his philosophy doesn't leave much room for nuance there. It's like, hey, not everybody who's brown or a woman hates America and isn't Christian. But in his mind, like only white men or Christian who have American values. But his underlings, who really I want to talk about, mm-hmm. they just go out <laughs> with with Bluetooth speakers slung around their shoulders, and they have maybe five hundred people watching live, like if that, because these guys are way down the chain of command. And all, of the five hundred people watching live, four hundred and ninety nine are tipping in increments of like fifty cents <laughs> to get a message played over the Bluetooth Uh-oh. that's just littered with the N word. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These these guys exist, dude. It's I've done really it. Why before, do they bro? do that? And it's sketchy, man. Like I went to, with a speaker. Yeah, I went out with a speaker during the Super Bowl over in the hood. I oh forgot, God! Like Inglewood, I think is where the the stadium is. And someone donated to me on my speaker, like "fuck Crips," and then like it blurred. And oh. I was like, "Bro, you're trying to get me killed out here, dude." But also, and also the reason that it reminded me of these guys too is these guys. I mean, I sort of can relate to it, but they think just any word that is politically incorrect, which again, I sort of relate to this. They love it. Mm -hmm. And that's, it basically makes up half their vocabulary. So just every chance they get, they're saying retard, they're dropping hard Fs, they're Mm -hmm. dropping not too many end bombs. I think they, they know that that's not socially acceptable. They don't don't get get their ass kicked, but they're just like their, their bits are it's, it would be like if you and I filmed an Edward 40 hands, 10 years before we ever filmed the Edward Ford. Oh hits. yeah. That would have been interesting. When, when we were like 16 guys are like kind of confusing until you learn that he's never touched a woman before. Yeah. And it starts to make a lot more sense. Yeah. I just, um, huh. yeah, I, I the, really, I just wanted to comment on his underlings who are fucking hilarious, but absolutely remind me of Austin and Dino and Swolby yeah. running around Koreatown <laughs> live streaming. So the, the, yeah. so the, the gist of, of the documentary was that this is like a problem or. Yeah. I mean, he? dude, Louis CK and the BBC, a lot of his takes where, where one of the guys was just 
kind of going through right wing talking points like you can't say white power, but you could say every other kind of power. Mm. And then Louis just gives canned philosophy college professor responses, mm. which you knew that was going to happen. It's and so that was made it kind of disappointing that Louis Louis Theroux can't um, he can't be nuanced about anything. He just has to take a hardcore BBC left wing mainstream media stance. Yeah. And he can't be like, hey, Nick, I agree that the lack of Christian values and the disdain for America is a problem. Like he couldn't even meet him in the middle there. Damn. Without, I mean, obviously, I don't want Louis Theroux to go and endorse full on fucking white nationalism. But it was just the whole the whole time. That, you know, it was, it was a fun documentary. I recommend it. And the other one was on extreme alcoholism. And it made me think of Neeks. Oh, God. <laughs> How far? I mean, can you believe that that, that Nick Fuentes? I mean, he's just like. He was hanging out. He was hanging with like Kanye. Yeah, for a while, he's dude. a really like, smart guy. He's like really good at like social engineering and shit. Like, you know what? He See, weaseled look, his way into all these like places. It's like, I'll, damn. I'll dude. say this: just in my mind, the, every time I, th- I if I think Nick Fuentes, I see him in a suit because he's always in a suit. Yeah. That auto- automatically makes me think he's smarter than than he probably dude, is. He's my age. He started doing his stuff when he was like that eighteen, a lot. just wearing a suit with a green screen behind. Yeah. Him. And and I'm not, I don't claim to be super smart politically or in any other way, but I did think he was going to be more impressive intellectually than he was. Do you agree that he's not some sort of super genius that people make him out to be? No, I mean, I don't think like debate wise and stuff, he's like some kind of super genius. I just think for... He's not like Destiny. A guy like Destiny is super impressive to me intellectually. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think that... If you watch Destiny and him debate, they're pretty close. Like okay. Nick is a really good debater because he's had to be because he's been doing this for so long now and he always has to argue with people. But I think he's more just smart in the way he, he's able to just like sort of keep getting him, his name out there and hang sure. out with Kanye and just mm-hmm. like, I, mean, he's rich, I don't know. Right? It, he is like different. He's like almost like street smarts as opposed to like book smarts. Sure. I respect that. And I, I'm a fucking idiot. So I feel weird. Even a, a, a probable white nationalist i feel weird calling stupid because i don't like calling anybody stupid when it comes to like semi-white nationalist (laughs) history though like he's got he knows the dates and everything he's really like well congratulations he knows when nathan bedford forrest was born and he knows when emmett till was lynched (laughs) yep yep good for him well, so I watched that, but the alcoholism documentary was fucking gnarly. Dude. All right. So what what makes an actual I mean, what constitutes an actual alcoholic, though? Because this has been a, something that I've always talked about and everybody has like their like definition of an actual alcoholic. What do you what do you think? And what does the documentary say? It didn't define the word alcoholic. It just showed people in the belly of alcoholism. Dr. Drew always said when consequences start arising in your life that you're probably an alcoholic, whether that is your health deteriorating problems in your relationship, not being able to make it to work, not being able to stay sober at work. So I think that's the definition broadly of alcoholism. But different people can function at different level of of out. Some people, they're 18 years old and they have to get sober because they came this close to dying. Right. They were deathbed alcoholics before they graduated high school. Other people are alcoholics who are 74 and have been drinking their whole lives, like Charles Bukowski. Mm. Charles Bukowski was an alcoholic with relatively few consequences throughout his life. Hmm. You could argue that it made him rich even. He was a great writer, yeah. But in this documentary, dude, there's a 40... So a middle-aged, frumpy, Cameroonian French woman is hanging out with Louis Theroux. She drinks... Five tall cans of 9% alcohol every day, maybe six or seven, actually. She drinks those every day. And she's got a boyfriend who is like a, a, a kind of a handsome 40-year-old dock worker who's also an alcoholic. Wow. And sh- they go up to her and Louis Theroux go up to this guy for an interview. And the first thing he says is, yeah, uh, usually my girlfriend's... I, don't, I can't do an English act. Let me try this again. <clears throat> Yeah, usually my girlfriends have tits and asses, but I made an exception for this one. <laughs> and Louis Thur is just like, what thing to say? Like, oh, you God. say that to her face? He's like, I don't care. And, the fuck? and then he's like, you want to have a go? And he gets up and he tries to fight Louis Thur. Like, fuck, dude? But then they go back the next day and he's on the bench and the girl's like, oh. Michael, I'd, I'd like to speak to you. And Louis Theroux is like, I'm Louis Theroux with the BBC. Can we, can we, can we maybe settle the, the score from yesterday? I'd like to apologize. <laughs> the guy turns around and goes, 
I was shagging me ex-girlfriend last night. <laughs> right to the girl's face. What the hell, He dude? just abuses this alcoholic girl. Oh, my God, dude. And they're Cameroonian? Well, one of them was Cameroonian. The other guy's a white... Eng the guy who talks all the shit's a white English what dude. A strange bear. But then they there was one guy in there who's got liver cirrhosis, and his belly's all swollen up, mm. and they had to drain his fucking belly. He's Jesus. got three months to live. And he just has to sit there and get his belly drained all the time. Yeah, that sounds like a horrible death, dude. That was uh, Dare would go through liver cirrhosis and how painful it is in your final days. I guess you turn yellow, too. You know, yeah. your liver stops working. It's pretty gnarly. You think you'd still get pussy with liver cirrhosis? I me? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, a, a certain <laughs> level of pussy. I think, I, I think I'd get a certain level of it, but it wouldn't be really high quality, Danny boy. I don't think I'd be pulling any... Uh, college girls here and there i asked leo once how much money it would take for him to switch wee wees with rat dick ralph you quoted i think like 20 million it was 20 so i never have to worry about anything including my family yeah 20 million and i asked you if you'd still get pussy with rat dick's wee wee and you said absolutely you would still mm -hmm. oh yeah I would, I would still get, it would, yeah, I would, I would have the money to kind of like, I know that every girl wouldn't, would leave kind of unhappy after our, you know, our sexual encounters, you know what I mean? But uh -huh. it wouldn't matter because I, there would, there'd always be another one I could wine and dine, you know, take out, have a, have a beautiful place, you know, my butler, I'd have a butler for yeah. God's sake. If you had $20 million, girls would tell you they had the biggest cock, you had oh, yeah. the biggest cock they'd ever seen. Oh yeah. They, they would try to wife me up. They'd be like, oh, you have a boyfriend cock. And I'd be like, really? Uh -huh. You sure about that? Uh-huh. A fucking mm. rat cock. <laughs> you got a transfusion of rat cock. Are you sure? I had a buddy, this guy, not, he wasn't really a buddy. He was, I, we called him Smee when I lived with him at 74 mm -hmm. Eastwood Drive. Many, many stories with yeah, Smee. Yeah, we've talked about Smee, I'm sure, on this he, podcast. He told me though, that he really wished that he got to fuck girls and then court them because he was really short and out of shape and, you know, all around a total piece of shit, actually. So it wasn't just like he was short. Like, if you're a guy listening, that's you can be short and be a boss. A lot of he, the biggest pimps I know are short. Uriah like, Faber. Yeah. Uriah Faber, biggest pimp I've ever met. Five foot five. And he wasn't even rich when you met him, right? I mean, he was, or was no, he? No, no, right? he yeah. wasn't. No, he was um, probably making like 40 grand a year, something like that. Wow. But it, the, 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 Smee mm -hmm. ate pizza every meal of the day, and he Ugh. drank a handle of Evan Williams four times a week. So we'd get four of them a week Jesus. and just cycle through them at night, just get shit faced. Oh my God. Maybe the biggest loser I ever met. He, however, had a big, meaty fucking dick. That sucks. And he just, that was his thing. He had a big cock. And he just, he wished profoundly that girls would see his penis and fuck him before he had to talk to him. <laughs> because he just could not get laid. He, oh, it was wow. impossible for him to get laid because the cock was the last thing. So what I'm saying is, guys, <laughs> if you're like me and you have a less than impressive cock, you're good. Because chicks don't see it until they it's already like you. It's too late. Till it's too late. Till it's too fucking late. That's how I like it. Yeah. Whenever I reveal myself to a woman, uh, you know. Too ah, late. Ah, yay, too peso late, pluma. Dude. Yeah. I pretend I'm peso pluma. I've been listening. 